All right, so this is gonna be a review of Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I'm a little bit sick. I don't know if you can hear that, but we're gonna get this done. I wanted to get a review up this week. I wasn't gonna review this uh, because who the fuck cares? I mean, I liked Chippendale when I was a kid, but I don't really care to see a movie about them, but whatever, and the trailer didn't look that great. But so many people are talking about it, mostly because of the references, because that's mainly what this movie is, but or whatever, we'll talk about all that in a second. Uh, it's directed by Akiva Schaefer. So in this, like Roger Rabbit, and hell, Roger Rabbit even shows up because everybody does, um, the cartoon characters and even CG characters, CG animated characters, uh, they're real and they live in our world, right? And they're people, they go to school, things like that. Uh, so Dale, um, played by uh, Andy Samberg, he goes to a new... A uh, new school, and he doesn't have any friends. He sits alone at this small table at lunch. And then Chip, played by John Mulaney, uh, comes up and sits with him, and they become friends. Uh, they kind of have a sense of humor, you know, between the two, so they end up doing the talent show and things like that. Uh, so they end up, you know, going to Hollywood and becoming actors. Uh, they're extras and certain things, but then they get their own show, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Um, but eventually it gets canceled, and they... Uh, can split apart and go their separate ways. So they come back together in this uh, so that they can find their friend Monty. Uh, Monterey Jack, he's the bigger rat character that's addicted to cheese in the show. It's kind of the same way in here. Um, somebody's kidnapping, you know, uh, cartoon characters, cartoon stars, you know, along with him, he ends up getting kidnapped. So they have to find him and then also, you know, take down the person that's kidnapping all these, uh, all these other stars. So I did not like this movie. Actually, I don't like movies like this. Um, but we'll we'll talk more about that. I have plenty I want to talk about. I don't know how much I'm going to get to because uh, I want to make this kind of short. Uh, positives. Uh, I think the performances, for the most part, are pretty good. Um, all but one. But definitely John Mulaney and Andy Samberg I thought were great. Uh, I think they have a lot of good chemistry. There's some emotional moments that actually did work. Uh, you know, it's a little manipulative with some of the music over there, you know, some of the music in those scenes, but uh, I actually did feel it and I did get it kind of sort of invested in their characters. Uh, the, the performance that I don't think is all that great is uh, Kiki Lane, who plays Ellie. I think I might have seen her before, but I don't know. Um, but I think the direction and the writing is probably what kind of messed her up because it always kind of feels like she's talking to a child. Like she's always kind of smiling with every line and she's a huge fan of Chippendale Rescue Rangers and all that and it just, it doesn't work. Like there's never a point where any line that she says feels natural or organic at all. Uh, I don't believe that she's actually talking to these little small chipmunks ever, like at any point. Um, but other than that, I think all the other performances are, are good. Uh, J.K. Simmons plays Captain Putty, he's this captain. Uh, some of those jokes were kind of lame where he has things stuck to him. But I thought J.K. Simmons was really good, especially with what happens with that character a little bit later on. Uh, the movie shot, for the most part, okay. Uh, I couldn't see myself seeing it on the big screen, but for a streaming service, I was like, eh, I guess it looks fine. There are some clever moments here and there when it comes to these kind of movies. I'll just say it right now, this is one of those meta movies that I've been talking about lately. We've been getting quite a few of them. Um, I don't really like meta movies, but with most meta movies, there will at least be some things that are kind of clever, and here there are some good things. Um, like with bootlegs, I, everybody knows there's bootlegs of like, uh, you know, Disney movies and things like that, the not Disney movies and things like, you know, you know, you've seen Asylum, you've seen all these other, you know, fake versions of movies to try to trick people into buying them instead of the original. And they make jokes about that, and I actually thought that was pretty clever, at least at first. So I'll give it that. There are some jokes that I th found legitimately funny. So this movie, and I heard somebody say this beforehand, and they were right. This movie is not a movie. <laughs> this is how many references can we fit in this motherfucker? And then we have like the bones of a story in this. I mean, like I said with the opening with the meeting, it is the most generic meeting I've ever seen. A character comes into a school. They don't have much friends. Uh, they're kind of lonely. They're sitting alone at lunch. Somebody you know, actually gives them a chance, sits next to them, and they become friends forever after that. It is so, so predictable and generic. I was like, okay, so you're, you're barely even really setting this up, but fine. Uh, and then you have this mystery, which is barely a mystery. In a mystery movie, 
um, it was reminding me of like the nice guys or whatever, where it's a mystery that takes place in Hollywood, has to do with the industry and things like that. It was reminding me of that, like a mixture of that with Who Framed Roger Rabbit, um, but not as good as either of those movies. Uh, it it has this mystery, but it shows the villain, the main, I'm talking about the main villain, uh, like 30, I think it was like 35 minutes in, or somewhere in 30 minutes in, in an hour and a half movie. Uh, it, it showed the villain, his origin, what he's doing, his plan. It's like, that's something you say for later on in the movie. But no, they got it out of the way real, like pretty early. And I was like, wow, really? Like almost nothing has happened already. And you're already showing all of that with the villain? And I think the villain's even in the trailer too, because they didn't even bother to kind of keep it hidden for the trailer because they don't really care because it's not really about the, the, the actual story. Yeah, they do these little things. They go into, have to get into certain places and stuff like that, but they don't really do all that much to the point where they have to force this little action scene when they're in this little machine or whatever. And they have to make it as contrived as possible for them to actually get in the machine so they can start moving around and jumping around and stuff so they can have something to do. The final little thing at the end was kind of fun and imaginative and it had like other bootlegs of other shows and things and that was kind of funny. Uh, but they, most of the time they're just kind of running away in that. But that's most of what they do is at that very end uh, because the rest of it is just kind of them just walking around and you see, you know, these little reference characters. They have full on, you know, conventions so that they can show other characters. Uh, they were really, really proud of that ugly Sonic that they got, like the Sonic that they originally had for the Sonic movie is in this. Um, and I guess they must have all high-fived each other when they got that because it was, was funny for like a minute when they first showed it. Like that's a visual gag and that's about it. But they make him a full-on character. Like they go for so long talking about his teeth and things uh, early on and then they bring him back again and then they bring him back again at the end. It's like, it's not funny anymore. Nobody is laughing at that by the end of this movie. Like I, I just, I don't, I don't get it, but regardless. Speaking of bad CG characters, there's a point where they go into the uncanny valley and they're like, there was a time where like it looked real, but it didn't look right. Like, you know, CG. Uh, they even make a joke about Robert Zemeckis, uh, really on the nose joke because they have Seth Rogen's character. He's a Viking that's supposed to be like Beowulf, which Beowulf, Beowulf looks better than that. Um, and, you know, his name is Bob and, you know, it, they, uh, they say that he has Polar Express eyes and it's like, okay, well, really on the nose at this point. Are you talking to us? Obviously. I said, who are you? Well, right. But in fairness, it looks like you're talking to that window. Nope. It actually looks like I'm looking right at you. I was watching that and there's even a reference to cats. And I was like, it kind of irked me because I was like, you guys got a lot of nerve to talk about bad CG because there's even bad CG in this movie. But that aside, um, you gonna tell me uh, Will Smith's Genie from 2019, which also came out at the same year that Cats did, you mean to tell me that that doesn't belong in Uncanny Valley? Like, come on. You don't have any room to make fun of anybody else's bad CG. Especially, like, because this movie actually does have bad CG in it. The, the uh, Dale is the best looking CG. You can tell they spent time and, you know, effort, effort money on that because, uh, you know, he's the main, one of the main characters, so you really gotta get that right. But with everything else, there is bad CG all through this motherfucker. I mean, there are characters that look awful. I mean, awful. So it's like, man, you really do got a lot of nerve doing this kind of thing, you know, making those kind of jokes with the CG that you guys put out on pretty much a regular basis. The world building of this movie doesn't make sense. Uh, there's a house that's a cartoon. Apparently all cartoons go to school and things like that. How did that house go to school? Like there's a, a, a car, like in Cars, Pixar, the Pixar movie, which there's a lot of questions even with that movie. But I was like, does that car have a VIN? Does that car have to be registered? I mean, I shouldn't be thinking about those things, but I couldn't help it. There's a point that looks really bad where one of the cartoon characters has like a, a robe on. And, and I was like, wait a minute, he has a real robe. I was like, wait, are there separate stores for cartoon characters to buy cartoon clothes or real clothes or CG clothes? How does that work? I mean, it really did look bad too, by the way. Um, there's a polar bear that really looks awful in this movie too. Like, you know, but, but with meta movies, it, it, it's a way for you to dismiss criticism. Well, we made fun of bad CG so we can have bad CG in this movie. Like, it, I hate that shit, right? We get in all these meta movies and I've been talking about the Matrix uh, scream um, and no matter how bad these movies are, uh, people dismiss any criticism you can have for them because they make fun of themselves. So, you know, like I saw on Metacritic, uh, it, it, it's in a green, it's, it's not that high, but it's in a green. And I was shocked at that. 
because this movie is not a movie. Like it, it really is barely a movie. There's barely a plot really going on. It, 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 it's, it's crazy, but people will, people will accept it or still praise it, maybe even say it's a masterpiece, just simply because they have these little meta jokes in there, because they you know, wink every now and then. Like a perfect example, they'll talk about, oh, they're gonna, they're gonna make a, uh, a, like a more serious, newer version of the theme song when people just want to hear the theme song. And then immediately that, st that, that happened, where they had this new version of Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And it's like, I don't care. <laughs> like, you, you know, there's a part where they're like, I hate when cartoon characters rap. And I was like, I thought that was funny at first, but then they rap in this movie later on. And like, okay, I mean, yeah, you're making a joke about it, but you're also having these characters rap and rap badly. And Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers is, is kind of a weird thing too, because I was like, why did you make this about this? Like, I don't even think this is the most popular of your like Disney shows or whatever. Like, I was I, I was th I was thrown off when I saw the trailer. I was like, for what? <laughs> I was like, why are you making this? And then for you to have these moments where people look fondly on Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers or when they're you know quoting different episodes and bringing up different episodes, and there's a character in here that's a huge fan and loved it. And her grandmother used to send her the tapes, and it's just it's it's a lot when you have all this fanfare for this and. I watched it when I was a kid. I barely remembered it. Like I had forgotten even you know, Fat Cat, the villain that they had in it. YouTube channels can make Easter egg videos, and you know people can geek out on oh, well you got this, you got this, you got this in there. Oh, that's that character. So that's really all it's about at the end of the day. So. What are you looking at? Honestly, your weird dead eyes. <laughs> they are weird. <laughs> Super weird. <laughs> It's so funny. This is not a. It's not a movie, and it's yeah. It's you know. It's got some okay moments in it, but it's just, it's just kind of lame. I was watching. It, I was like, okay, you know. Earlier on, I was like, I'm kind of interested, but like, I'd much rather watch Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Like, we have so many different versions of that, and we have different versions of movies that are meta and have all these other references to other things. When Space Jam Two came out last year. This isn't as bad as that, but you know, it, it has a little bit more going for it, more of a story than just advertising a streaming service but it's still just really lame and i was kind of annoyed <laughs> so that's it this could have actually legitimately been a good movie if they would have taken any time to actually write the story and write the mystery but they didn't because they don't care <laughs> so whatever i'm giving this utter trash i thought about a rental for a little bit but then i got to the end of the movie and i went well there's not enough good things in here for anybody to even watch this on the streaming service so i'm just gonna give it trash and move on. I really didn't didn't care for this. The meta stuff was starting to get on my fucking nerves, as it usually does. But anyway, that's Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Some people aren't enjoying it. That's fine. I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's it. We're done.